Good day, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Nimble Flyer. I'm now at Hangzhou Xiaoshan International Airport Terminal 4. I'm flying to Singapore on board Scoot on their Scoot Plus Premium Economy class. Scoot is the low cost subsidiary of Singapore Airlines. It's my first time flying Scoot on their premium products. Uh, well, how does everything go? Let's find out. After almost a year of lockdowns, mass testing, and mandatory quarantines, China finally moved away from its draconian zero-COVID policy in December last year. In January this year, the quarantine requirement for international travelers was lifted. The requirement for essential international travel was also removed. Fortunately, I'm able to settle in the country where I studied. Soon after that, the COVID restrictions were lifted domestically. At first, I was very worried that my grandparents wouldn't be able to make it. But it turns out that my family has a strong genetic line, and they were able to recover quickly, even in old age. What's more, my body seems to be genetically resistant to COVID, as does my father. This made me more confident that it was unlikely that I would have to bid farewell to my grandparents because of COVID. So I decided to go back to Australia. The Customs Health Declaration is perhaps one of the reminders of the Zero Covid policy. You need to use WeChat to scan the code and fill in the form. Scoot Plus passengers have their own check-in desk. After checking my hotel reservations, onward ticket to Australia and my Australian visa, the ground staff issues my boarding passes. My checked baggage goes all the way to Kuala Lumpur. The check-in is done, so let's go to the gate. After saying goodbye to my parents, now I'm going through security and immigration. It hasn't been long since the international borders were reopened. International flights are still limited. TR-189 is the only international flight leaving Hangzhou tonight. Immigration is still done manually. Once a few counters are open, it takes me about 20 minutes to get through. This is probably due to discourage potential imposters and fraudsters from going abroad, as my final destination is Australia, and the purpose of my trip is to settle there, the process is mostly smooth. Although there is only one international flight tonight, the duty-free shop is still open. Due to the lack of international flights, the terminal looks deserted. Hopefully, more flights will be added gradually. As a low-cost carrier, school plus passengers don't have access to a launch. There is even no place to buy drinks and snacks in the international departure area. Terminal 4 only opened at the end of 2022. It looks quite spacious and modern. There is a power socket and two USB ports between the seats. The flight uses a remote gate for boarding. The escalator ride is a bit long. Because Scoot is a low-cost carrier, the business class it offers isn't the kind of lifeless business class seats you would normally find on traditional airlines' wide body jets. Instead, it is more like a domestic business class seat or a premium economy class seat on traditional airlines' wide body jets. The fare includes 30 kilograms of checked baggage. The flight is slightly delayed due to the late arrival of the inbound flight from Singapore. Four shuttle buses are used to transport all passengers from the gate to the aircraft. For the incoming international flights, the plane is parked in Terminal 2. The shuttle bus takes me all the way from Terminal 4 to Terminal 2. Then I go up a flight of stairs to the air bridge. My flight to Singapore is on this 5.3-year-old Scoot Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner. It has Singapore registration, Nar, Victor, Oscar, Foxtrot, Kilo. Welcome aboard Scoot Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner. It has 18 Scoot Plus seats and 311 Economy Class seats. The Scoot Plus cabin is in a 232 configuration. To the left of my seat, I'm able to adjust the angle of my seat with these two buttons. 
The tray table is stored in the central armrest. I have to open the cover and pull it out. Soon after I take my seat, a Taiwanese flight attendant comes to greet me, hands me a small cup of mineral water, and confirms my in-flight meal order. Although the flight is mostly full, the school plus cabin is about 50% full. In my seat pocket, I find an in-flight menu, an advertisement for Chinese New Year snacks, a safety information card, and an air sickness bag. As a low-cost carrier, there are no complimentary meals included in the fare except for Scoot Plus. Food and drinks are priced in Singapore dollars and are definitely not cheap. There are two power sockets on the central armrest. Use of these is included in the Scoot Plus fare. To the right of my seat are the buttons for calling the cabin crew and adjusting the reading lights. As a low-cost carrier, there is no in-flight entertainment system in the back of the seat. The seat pitch is 38 inches, which is fine for the 4.5-hour flight to Singapore. The captain makes an announcement from the flight deck. He apologizes for the delay and then gives a briefing for the flight. Excuse me, Scoot, is it hard to clean the cabin properly? Bye-bye, Hangzhou. After the plane has leveled off, the cabin crew comes to serve me a very late dinner. Considering it's already midnight, should I call it a late night snack instead? I pre-ordered Oriental Treasure Rice, which comes with shiitake, mushrooms, sliced chicken, pickled sausages, and chestnuts. Even though it is a microwave dish, it tastes great. The dessert is a small packet of cookies. I opt for a can of lemon soda. This Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner has in-flight Wi-Fi. You have to pay for the Wi-Fi, which is based on data usage and is definitely not cheap. As a Scoop Plus passenger, I get a 30 megabytes voucher for the in-flight Wi-Fi. The in-flight Wi-Fi is almost like a mascot. It is very difficult to get online. The speed is similar to 2G mobile data. It even takes forever to load Flight Radar 24. The onboard Wi-Fi doesn't provide any in-flight entertainment via the intranet either. Luckily, I have some videos downloaded on my iPhone to help pass the time. The plane flies along the Taiwan Strait before leaving China from Guangdong. The flight is smooth at first, but becomes a little bit bumpy over the South China Sea. After almost 5 hours in the air, the plane begins its final approach to Singapore Changi International Airport. For your information, I paid 2,244 Chinese yuan, around 490 Australia dollar, or 440 Singapore dollar, or 327 US dollar for this one-way connecting flight on Scoot, Scoot Plus from Hangzhou to Kuala Lumpur with an extra 10 kilograms of prepaid baggage. Let's wrap up my first Scoot Plus experience right here, right now. The fear is attractive in the early stages of China's reopening. By paying a little bit more than the Fourth Airlines Economy Class fare, I'm able to fly a little more comfortably. Check-in is mostly efficient. There's no place to buy food and drink in the international departure area. The seat allows me to stretch my legs during the flight. The plane is mostly well-maintained, except for the dirty floor. The food is delicious even after reheating. However, the food and drinks on board are not cheap. Flight attendants speak good Mandarin and are happy to chat with you. The flight deck keeps passengers informed about the flight. The onboard Wi-Fi is basically useless and very expensive. 
There's no in-flight entertainment system on board. You have to bring your own. The flight is usually smooth. Arrive at Changi International Airport ahead of schedule, despite a slightly late departure. I haven't had a shower for a day, so I visited the SAS Premier Lounge with the Dragon Pass vouchers provided by my Bank of Communication credit cards. The shower in this lounge is completely unattended. No towel, no amenity. Oh my god. After my shower, it is almost breakfast time. Let's see what the lounge has to offer. Some pastries. You can make your own laza here. There is fruit juice, milk, Swiss yogurt, soft drinks and beer in the fridge. Sandwiches, ham and cheese. Breakfast cereals and cornflakes. A few alcoholic drinks. Western style breakfast available. The lounge is quite busy in the morning. I could hardly find an empty dining table. After my quick visit to the lounge, I take advantage of the 96 hour visa free transit to make a quick visit to the city center. All these and Kiwis can visit Singapore without visa for a maximum of 90 days. Thank you for watching my first flight report of 2023.